Hey everyone, uh, before I get into this video, I gotta remind you we have a couple giveaways going on. The first is for a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 5, and an Xbox Series X. The other is for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Alright, to enter, head down to the description. Uh, details will be down there. Also, we are on our road to 100 thousand subscribers if we can hit a hundred thousand subscribers before the end of 2020 we have a hundred plus winner thousand plus dollar gaming bash giveaway happening in january i really hope you guys uh hit that subscribe button and enjoy this content because we have some heartwarming stuff to talk about today and this is kind of an off the cusp thing right this isn't about you know video game news in particular this isn't about like a gaming opinion we actually have a couple stories to talk about that deal with um the heartfelt nature of the gaming world because i feel like in the world we're in today we have a console wars are raging right now with playstation 5 xbox series x coming out people wondering what what's going what's going to happen with nintendo next year we're getting a switch pro uh you still have people out there throwing this whole reputation out there that you know nintendo is, is for kids or for babies um there's all this crazy stuff happening in the world uh we have a pandemic going on still going on wave two is coming before wave one even ended in the united states uh, you know, we got sports back, but then, you know, even in sports, they're getting hit. Uh, there, there's just a whole lot of craziness. A lot of people got unemployed. Um, you know, some people are struggling to get back to work. So the people that are working are often working 60 plus hour weeks. Like we just did a story recently about crunch at uh, CD Projekt Red. And what, what, what I found most interesting coming out of that story was how many people responded saying, hey, why are we even talking about crunch right now when the rest of us are working 60 plus hour weeks? And I hear you. At my job, I'm not currently working 60 hours. I'm only working 40. But if you want to throw YouTube in the mix, then, I mean, yeah, I'm probably over 60. If you want to count this, I do technically make revenue on YouTube. So, I mean, I guess you should probably count it um, as a, at least uh, some sort of job, even if I happen to enjoy it. So, I get it. A lot of us are having tough times. That's why I wanted to bring this story of positivity. And... I have a personal story to tell, but before I get into the personal one, I want to get into the one that's out there that popped up on Nintendo Reddit. Um, and it, this is about someone who recently bought a DSi, I believe, or maybe it was a DS. It was, it was the special Zelda edition. Uh, they bought it, I believe, off eBay. And here's a, here, here's a special note that came with it. Hi there. Thank you for buying. I got this DS as a birthday gift when I was 10. I had no idea who Link or Zelda were when I got it, but I surely did by the end, and it traveled with me for lots of long rides. I'm 23 now, and hoping someone else goes this, or gains the same enjoyment that I did. Happy gaming and collecting or reselling times are tough, lol, Janie. And obviously that's a, a very heartfelt story. Um, just someone uh you know a lot of us are, are, are selling things uh last year is actually when i had my big financial crisis um before the pandemic even came along uh last year i lost my my uh my good paying job I had, I had a really nice paying job that i was supporting my family with i lost that in january of 2019 um and then throughout the year i really struggled financially as our savings dwindled and even now the savings isn't built back up i know you guys see the giveaways and there's like maybe a false perception out there that i'm extremely well off or something i'm not my bank account is down to the hundreds there there is not um you know i'm, I'm, I'm still mostly paycheck to paycheck I, I happen to be fortunate enough to have a, a, a few hundred bucks that sits in my account between checks but um i'm still you know i'm not I, there's a reason i'm in college full-time right now you know there, there's a reason that um yeah i'm not making enough money to support my family long haul at least not comfortably you know we're one you know car accident away from being screwed we're one um you know hospital bill away from being for being done and i'm still paying medical bills from last year because i had a hard i had a hard year medically last year as well so i had a hard year medically and financially and it led to me selling a lot of stuff when you guys see my zelda shelf up here which i know isn't, isn't very visible in this particular video uh just based on the angle i decided to go with they it used to be full of almost every single Zelda amiibo. I used to have a bunch of Mario amiibo as well. I had the Splatoon amiibo, and I sold them all. I sold every single one of them, except for the two amiibo that fans sent me, because I don't believe that you should resell things that fans send you in fan mail. So a lot of the stuff you see back here is actually stuff that like fans have sent me over the years, uh, whether it was when I ran Zelda Informer or ran this YouTube channel. 
I had to sell a, a pretty much all of my gaming collection. I sold all my physical games last year. Like I have a small physical game collection um, sitting back here, like right there. Uh, and I have I have a few 3DS games um, laying around as well, or DS games too. But I, I honestly sold, gosh, 99% of my collection. Sold all my, my Xbox One games and my Xbox One X. Um, I sold my Switch technically at the time. Uh, I sold uh, over 30 uh, physical Switch games. Uh, I sold a lot of stuff. And this isn't a woe is me situation. We all go through hard times, right? Selling your gaming stuff is the least concern for people going through hard times. Uh, but I sold a lot of stuff. I, I, had, a, I had a Majora's Mask um, that I got while working at Zelda Informer that was worth like 500 bucks at the time. Uh, some people see it in some of my old videos hanging on the wall. Had to sell that for three hundred dollars because I, I needed money i sold some of my my equipment i sold my mixer uh at the time because i needed i needed money and i went back to my usb mic i, I held on to these mics but i almost sold these mics as well i got two of them uh, could have you know 150 bucks a pop probably could have got 100 bucks each i was going through a hard time um and while i'm doing better today uh, what's important to understand when people see this is I doubt that Janie here when they sold this DS was was doing it because they wanted to right like when we have these sentimental items you know this person is what 23 it said yeah 23 and so they've held on to this thing for 13 years they likely didn't sell this collector's edition DS that they created fond memories and had their first Zelda experience with because they wanted to but probably because they're going through a hard time. And, and that's why even in the note, you know, Janie notes that, hey, I understand if you bought this just so you could upmarket and resell it. Because hard times happen. And we're all going through them in one way or another. Yeah, 2020 financially is a better year for me, but there's other tough things happening with my children and the homeschooling situation that's been going on. And obviously, um, you know, dealing with the fact that I can't take them to public parks most of the time because there's too many people and social distancing and, and all this crazy stuff happening in the world. Um, we, you know, this year, both of our vehicles crapped the bed. Both of them. We had we had to financially commit to a brand new vehicle for the family that we can't afford. We, we have a vehicle that is too expensive and beyond our budget. But we needed to get something. And we wanted to get something safe for the kids. So we went beyond our budget to do it. It sucks. And we're paying the price for that. But that's a choice we made. So when I first got into Zelda, the very first time I got into Zelda, this is, this is the story here. I uh, was, man, um... Gosh, I'm trying to think of my exact age. I think I was like seven or eight, um, somewhere in there. I was in elementary school, and I didn't own a Game Boy or anything at the time. Uh, I ended up getting one uh, later the, later in the year, uh, but I didn't have that. My The only video games I got to play was I got to play Gnome, a game called Gnome, G-N-O-M-E. Uh, I got to play that game on PC at my grandma's house. Uh, and then I also got to play a game called Return to Zork at my grandma's house. In addition to that, I was able to play some games on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. For those who don't know, I was born in 1986. Uh, so I was like, you know, right at the edge of the NES and then the SNES coming out. And the SNES ended up being my favorite platform of all time. Although Switch, Switch to its credit, is, is getting close to passing it. So I kept thinking along the way, what am I going to do? Um, to play games uh, when I see other people with Game Boys and like portable little game game systems and stuff because I, I at home I got to play Duck Hunt and, and uh, Hogan's Alley um, Track and Field and uh, Mario Brothers. I, that was pretty much it. I got to play Punch Out as well You know Punch Out was uh, Punch Out Mike Tyson's Punch Out was actually my first ever time playing a game uh, My dad went to the bathroom when he was on Mike Tyson and then I unpaused the game and he I got destroyed and my dad got pretty mad because it was the first time he ever made it to Mike Tyson at the time. Uh, I still don't even know to this day if my dad beat Mike Tyson. I'm sure he has. He, he, my dad used to game a lot more. He still does. He has an Xbox One X. He's, he's not really a Nintendo guy anymore, but he's got an Xbox One X. He likes to play Call of Duty and Madden and, and, and some other games. Uh, but my thing is that uh, th that was my early gaming experience. Well, I was on a bus ride. Um, and this kid had a Game Boy, and I asked him politely if I could if I could try out his Game Boy. Uh, I don't know. I had no idea what game he was playing at the time, and he said no. And I was a kid that got bullied a lot when I was younger, uh, so I don't know what came over me, but I felt like this kid in saying no was bullying me again, or like teasing me, or whatever it was. So I punched him in the face and took his Game Boy. <laughs> I, 
I mean, it, it sounds horrible because it, it, it was, but it's not like I broke in his nose or something. Um, he didn't tell on me. I took his Game Boy, and in that Game Boy it was Link's Awakening. So I played, that was my very first time playing the Zelda game. Uh, and I took the Game Boy home with me um, and hid it from my parents, played it most of the night, came back on the bus the next day, feeling really, really bad about it. I gave the Game Boy back to the kid. I don't even remember his name. Like, he didn't, he didn't even go to my school. Uh, so I, I gave the Game Boy back to him. I apologized. <laughs> Uh, and I also gave him my allowance from from that week that I had earned which wasn't very much I only got like a couple bucks a week for allowance because I, I was in a poor family I'm surprised I even had allowance I had to earn it I had to do a lot of chores and I basically got the pocket change my parents had that week um, So I gave that to him and I said I'm sorry about that uh, Maybe you can use this money to put towards a new game. There's nothing wrong with the system whatever I felt really really bad. I grew up a Catholic boy. I knew what I did was wrong so uh, I ended up being rewarded, I guess, for being a good Samaritan, making up for my own mistake, I guess. And I ended up getting uh, a Game Boy for my grandma for my uh, later uh, after that school year uh, at uh, what what you call it at, at my birthday. <laughs> uh, so I got I got a Game Boy. Um, I got Super Mario Land with it, uh, and then I obviously really wanted to get Link's Awakening again uh, so I could beat it and, and play more of it because Link's Awakening ignited my love of Zelda the first ever Zelda game I played um, and that's when I learned that there was a Zelda game for the Nintendo uh, entertainment system and then obviously the Super Nintendo and so on and so forth and I've been a massive Zelda fan ever since it's my favorite franchise of all time it contains my favorite game of all time in Breath of the Wild so my story is that a first Game Boy I had I sold it last year Along with all my other gaming stuff. I don't think any of you guys have even seen my OG Game Boy. Giant, fat, gray, old school, 4AA battery Game Boy. Pretty beat up. Had some uh, chew marks on it from a dog. But it worked. It functioned. Because this is back when Nintendo made bricks for consoles. And you just, you had to purposely try to break them. Like a dog could get after it. And unless he breaks the screen, nothing, nothing's wrong with it. Uh, so I sold it. And when I sold it, I wrote a note uh, with it saying, hey, um, I got this Game Boy uh, back, you know, way back in the, uh, in like 1990 or 1991. And uh, I have thousands of hours of memories on this. And I'm hoping that whoever plays this is going to have just as many memories as I did as they go back and enjoy some old school gaming. Or maybe you're just getting it as part of a collection. Maybe you're going to refurbish it. Whatever you're going to do with it, I hope you get as much enjoy out of it as I did because the Game Boy is what propelled me into being the gamer I am today. Now, it wasn't the NES. It wasn't the PC. It was the Game Boy. In fact, the Game Boy is what made me want to play PC games even more as I started to become kind of a big PC gamer over the years, playing a ton of PC games, but also Nintendo. Game Boy kind of kept me connected to the Nintendo and made me interested in other Nintendo platforms. So, moral of the story is... Uh, that it's good to do some acts of kindness if you're in a situation where you need to get rid of a sentimental item. Um, we live in a world where acts of kindness are, are not happening um, as often as they should. Uh, if people wonder why I do so many giveaways, there's this like false narrative out there that my giveaways are this ploy to grow my channel because I often require that you subscribe to my channel to win. Because um, you know, even if your your name is drawn and I get get in contact with you and I find out you aren't subscribed, I'm probably going to draw a different name. And I know you know YouTube has this terms of service thing where you can't require that people subscribe to enter, but I'm not really. Uh, it's more so. You don't have to subscribe to enter per se, but you need to be subscribed to win, if, the, if that makes sense. That technically doesn't go against their terms of service. Um, but reality is, the reason I do that is I want to reward people who actually watch my content. Um, and I want to give back to my Nintendo Prime community as much as I can. And there's going to be a day, I, I hope there's going to be a day, when I'm, I'm so financially well off, that we're also talking about you know doing donations to charity. Um, giving thousands upon thousands of dollars to charities uh, that are helping the less fortunate. Uh, right now, I, I have seen a lot of the comments. I've seen a lot of the entries. I know a lot of you people that are entering uh, these, these these giveaways. You know, you can't afford a switch. Um, your family's your family's really really poor, and you're struggling just to have food on the table. It breaks my heart. Like it, it makes me you know wish I could send you grocery money if I knew it was going to go towards groceries. Um, you know. It, Get giving you money to, to find some entertainment uh, during this, whether it's eShop gift cards, you know, like these these ones that have already been been redeemed by some winners. Um, I just personally really hope that um, 
that I'm bringing some smile to a lot of people's. I, I, I realize I, I don't have, I'm not rich over here. I can't give everyone something. Um, but these giveaways are just my way of trying to have some positivity here in 2020 to help out people that are less fortunate than me right now because I was there. I almost lost my house last year, lost every vehicle we have. We're down to one vehicle now because we can only afford one right now, um, kind of afford one. You know, yeah, I have, I'm getting an Xbox Series X. I'll probably have a PlayStation 5 before the year is out. And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to, to afford these things. Uh, a lot of you guys are the reason I can. You know, we had a big September. Uh, and assuming that YouTube fixes my revenue situation there, that's one reason I can afford to, to get some of these things and do some of these giveaways. You know, the more of you that watch these videos, the more of you people that support uh, during live streams and do donations or whatever the case might be, like that's how I'm able to do these giveaways and give back to the community. And that's why I've said repeatedly, I'm going to keep doing giveaways as I can afford to do them. Right now, I can't afford to do too many more giveaways other than the current ones ongoing that you heard at the beginning of this video. But this isn't because I'm trying to be disingenuous. This isn't because I don't want to keep doing giveaways. Uh, but I do think uh, that taking a step back from the giveaways is good as well because I think a lot of people are starting to get this perception of my channel as I'm trying to spread positivity that... Uh, I'm just good for giveaways and my content isn't worthwhile. Um, that uh, if I don't give away something, your live streams aren't worth watching. And that disheartens me as well because this creates this, this reputation that, man, you just watch his videos for giveaways. You don't watch it for anything else. Um, I think one of the kindest things said to me that, that that's made my mind want to keep doing giveaways despite some of this uh, negative attention that comes from giveaways is... Things like when people called me the Mr. Beast of Gaming on Twitter. There were, I can't remember who said it, but there was like a couple people that said, man, you're like the Mr. Beast of Gaming, even though Mr. Beast does do gaming. Um, but like, you know, Mr. Beast, uh, he does a lot of charity work. Um, he didn't start out that way. But, um, you know, as he grew and started to, be, he started to get a lot of sponsorships and started making you know, legit money, he started turning around and putting that money, uh, every penny into his videos. And a lot of those videos ended up being for charity. Uh, and he still is going to keep doing that, I'm sure, for the rest of his life because he's one of the most charitable YouTubers you know, or content creators across any platform ever. Um, and people were saying that they feel like I'm that way because of the giveaways I do. And I'm not even close to Mr. Beast level. But I do feel like um, giving back is the best I can do to my community. Uh, so I'm going to continue to do it. Um, I'm glad that this person put this heartfelt note to make me make this video. Uh, I really hope you guys um, stuck around. I know this was a long one, so I get it. Most of you guys probably tuned out after like two to three minutes like, like normal. But for those that made it to the end, thank you so much for, for sticking by and hearing my story. Um, hearing all this stuff and uh, I hope uh, I hope there's an opportunity for every person that sees this video uh, I hope all of you guys eventually win one of my giveaways that I plan to keep going for as long as I'm doing YouTube there's at least bare minimum going to be the monthly giveaways um, the all the additional giveaways are always going to be dependent on, on how well I'm doing financially which right now um, you know <laughs> I'm okay right now I'm getting by all right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejans from the Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Um, you know, if you made it this far, go, you know, be sure to go follow over on, on Twitch and everything uh, because we'll be doing our live streams over there too uh, as we're trying to expand beyond YouTube. So we're not so reliant on YouTube as our sole place for revenue and views. Uh, we also uh, are re uploading our content on BitChute. Hopefully that starts today. It should. I don't know why my videos haven't appeared there yet. They claim they're supposed to be there. I don't know. Might have to get a hold of support, but eventually our videos are going to be appearing there as well. Well, I'm looking at some other platforms to put my videos on too, but we're not leaving YouTube. Don't worry. Still subscribe. We're going on a road to 100,000, uh, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. And uh, the next one, if you watch this in the morning, the video came out, which might be the live stream because there's going to be a live stream for uh, Nintendo Treehouse later today. I'm pretty excited about that one. All right. Bye. Bye.